June 29, 1933. You're looking at Jack Sharkey, world's heavyweight champion, who's about to meet challenger Primo Carnera in a scheduled 15-round heavyweight title bout at Madison Square Garden Bowl, Long Island City, New York. Sailor Jack Sharkey enters the ring wearing a white robe. Along with the champion is manager Johnny Buckley and two cornermen. Primo Carnera, the challenger, climbs through the ropes and shakes hands with Sharkey. Carnera makes his home in Seagwals, Italy, a small town with a giant-sized contender for world's heavyweight honors. Sharkey, who fights out of Boston, is making the first defense of the crown he won from Max Schmeling a year earlier. There were many notables present among the 40,000 fight fans who came to see this championship match. Popular ring announcer Harry Ballow is about to introduce one of the greatest former heavyweight champions of all time, sometimes known as the Manasseh Mauler, but better known as Jack Dempsey. Next, the man who defeated Jack Dempsey twice in a row, former world's heavyweight champion, Gene Tunney. Now, Harry Ballow is about to present the current holder of the world's heavyweight crown, representing the United States, the popular crowd-pleasing Bostonian, Jack Sharkey. Now the challenger. Let's listen. His opponent, his opponent, Italy's, Italy's pugilistic representative for the highest honors in the heavyweight division and a most worthy challenger, Remo Camera. The, the judges for this contest, Charlie Lynch and Jim Buckley. The referee, Arthur Donovan. Before the bell for round one, let's visit the training camps a few days earlier to see how each man prepared for the big fight. Sailor Jack Sharkey makes his headquarters at Gus Wilson's training camp, Orangeburg, New York, in Rockland County. United States Naval personnel, proud of Sharkey's boxing career that began during his Navy days, Turn out to wish the champion good going in his coming fight with Carnera. Working on the light bag, the champion sharpens up his speed and reflexes. Fast punching and all-around speed are Sharky's strong points. Okay, Jack. Let's pick up that pace a little. Next, the heavy bag for punch and power. And a short time out to say hello to your old friend, Jack Dempsey. Going into the Carnera fight, the 31-year-old Sharky had 47 bouts, winning 36, losing eight. He knocked out 14 men and was himself KO'd twice. Once by Dempsey. Nimble footwork comes from plenty of rope skipping. How about a bit more of the light bag? 
Good idea, Jack. You'll be depending on speed and reflexes against a giant like Carnera. A little bike riding to limber up those leg muscles before we enter the ring for a sparring session. Sharky in the full-length gym suit goes through his paces against his sparring partner who assumes the same crowding and bullying role Carnera is expected to use. The question is, will Sharky's speed and faster punching overcome Carnera's height, weight, reach, and power? Meanwhile, in New York, a giant hulk of a man poses for photographers after coming off the ship that brought him from Italy. Primo Carnera, also known as the Prime, standing six and a half feet tall, receives more than the usual welcome accorded a title contender from foreign shores. Good-natured and easygoing, despite his imposing size, the 26-year-old challenger is ready to open training for his heavyweight title bout with Jack Sharkey. Carnera's training camp was set up by Louis Cerisi and Bill Duffy, his managers in the United States. The Prime actually has three managers, since Leon C. had control over the fighter in Europe. There's a blonde trying to steal your act. If you can't beat him, join him. Get the blonde in the picture with you. Oops, there she is. It's really Ladies' Day at camp. Okay, let's try some rope skipping to un unlimber those sea legs. Not bad for a big boy. the fight, Carnera's backers unleashed a heavy publicity barrage about the big fellow's improvement. Nobody thought Primo could punch, but most people felt he could absorb a punch fairly well. He was impressive, primarily because of his mammoth size. Using these same bullying tactics, Carnero won 74 out of 80 fights was disqualified once, lost by a foul another time, and was outpointed four times. Back at Madison Square Garden Bowl, referee Arthur Donovan issues final instructions. And in just a moment, round one. Carnera, on the left, has a tremendous weight advantage of 59 and a half pounds over Sharkey. Now you can see Primo's bullying and mauling tactics. You see Carnera pressuring like that again and again throughout the fight. Although Sharkey is in close at this point, he would rather fight at long range, where he can use his speed and maneuverability. 
Carnera, on the other hand, is content with short-range brawling. As Sharkey rushes in, he catches a hard left that sends him into the rope. It was a half shove. Sharkey seemed to have trouble maintaining his balance throughout the fight. Carnera, with his back to us, is a fighter by education rather than instinct. He's a manufactured heavyweight who advanced to the contender's role by knocking over a long line of hand-picked second- and third-rate opponents. Sharkey's opposition has been of higher caliber. Madison Square Garden Bowl holds a jinx over defending champions, for no title holder in any division has successfully defended there. Arnera misses a right, and a left hook sends Sharkey reeling towards the rope. That was a demonstration of Dupreme's ponderous power. Arnera tries to uppercut at close quarters. You'll see more of those uppercuts later on, spelling real trouble for Jack Sharkey. Now Carnera's about to land a solid right-left-right combination. Combinations are blows put together in sequence. In the past, Primo's best weapon has been his left jab. But tonight, he's been scoring well with both hands. In the final seconds of round one, the giant challenger from Seagulls, Italy, has worked out a slight lead. In round two, you'll see an improved Sharky. The champion has yet to demonstrate his superior boxing ability. Here comes a good counter right by Carnera. Sharkey is biding his time while he seeks a good opening. It's early in the fight, and there are 13 rounds to go. Now the champion is beginning to land his jab to the face of the slower-moving challenger. Watch, and you'll see Primo miss two lefts as Sharkey ducks under the punches. He's about to fire a right to the body. But Carnero is moving away, taking the sting out of the blow. In the closing seconds of round two, Sharkey has chopped away Carnero's first round lead. is warming to his task. He seems extremely confident. He was the favorite. Seated at ringside are Bobby Jones, Bill Terry, Max Terry, Lefty O'Doul, and Hack Wilson. Some of the business leaders present are Bernard Baruch, Walter Chrysler, and Bernard Gimble. Sharkey misses an overhand right aimed at Carnera's jaw. That overhand right is a punch used by a shorter man against a taller adversary. Oh, no. 
Neither man lands at close quarters, and Carnera pushes Sharkey away. Sharkey lands a left hook, and Carnera misses his own left. And Primo half pushes, half punches Sharkey into the ropes. Carnera hasn't shown the accuracy displayed in round one, while Sharkey has grown increasingly competent. Round three has been another good round for Jack Sharkey. Now round five of the scheduled 15 rounders for the world's heavyweight crown between champion Sailor Jack Sharkey and challenger Primo Carnera. Both men looking for openings as they probe with their jabs. At this point, it's a close fight. Carnera took round one, but Sharkey won rounds two and three. Round four was even. Sharkey on the right is cautious, but highly confident. He feels he can outpoint Carnera, just as he did in their first fight. Carnera fails to make a clean break, and Donovan issues another warning. Although Dupreme hasn't learned to punch with real power, he usually wears down his opponents by sheer animal strength and endurance. Still, he's a vastly improved fighter from the original raw product. When Sharkey was in the U.S. Navy, stationed on the battleship Denver, he won the All-Navy heavyweight finals. Johnny Buckley, now Sharkey's manager, first saw the promising young fighter in Boston in 1923. A year later, Sharkey turned pro, but he didn't receive national recognition until 1926, when he won over Harry Wills by a foul. Carnero rushes in. Sharkey cleverly ties up the challenger. Watch Sharkey's left. His superior boxing ability has won him a narrow margin at this stage of the battle. However, he has yet to hurt Carnera. Now he blasts a hard right. Sharkey misses a looping right. He's almost forced to pitch overhand shots because of Carnera's towering height. Now Sharkey bobs and weaves, forcing Carnera to miss his left. But if you keep watching, you see Sharkey score with his own accurate left jab. Once again, the elusive Sharkey makes Carnera miss with both hands. Supreme, you notice, has not retained his first round accuracy. But Sharkey has improved during the last few rounds. Champion Jack Sharkey leads as we come to the end of round five. Round six. Carnero rushes from his corner as though eager to end the fight as soon as possible. confident most fans felt Carnera lacked the tools to stop Sharkey particularly the necessary killer instinct a left hook by Carnera put Sharkey against the strand another left and Sharkey slips to the canvas no knockdown Carnera seems to have taken the play away from the champion.
Another barrage, and Sharkey floundered. He hasn't been getting away from Dupree's shot. He's slowing down. After getting a wrestler's headlock on Sharkey, Primo seems to say, where are you, boy? Years later, Carnero was to become a better wrestler than a boxer. Now Carnero opens up with uppercuts, and Sharkey is getting deeper and deeper into trouble. His crown has begun to topple. Carnero showing his sharpest accuracy since round one has been in complete command here in round six. Now watch Sharkey's best punch of the fight. But it only slows Primo down for a moment. Here comes the end for Sharkey. Watch this right uppercut. Panera shoved Sharkey with his left and caught him with the uppercut as the sailor bounced off the ropes. The fans are stunned at the sight of the champion flat on his face. It's all over. The time of the knockout was two minutes, 27 seconds of the sixth round. Sharkey, still two days to walk alone, is helped to his stool by his cornerman and referee Arthur Donovan. Carnera. After a long climb up the ladder, has at last achieved his ambition. The, the time, two minutes, 27 seconds, six rounds. The, the sixth round started much like the first, with Carnera pitching uppercuts, and it ended suddenly and dramatically as Carnera became the first Italian to win the heavyweight mantle worn by such great champions as John L. Sullivan, Gentleman Jim Corbett, Ruby Bob Fitzsimmons, Jack Dempsey, and Gene Tunney. Look at Carnera. He still can't grasp the magnitude of his triumph. So sudden was the ending. So, Primo Carnera became the world's heavyweight champion June 29th 1933.